In the late 1500s, a man of both aristocratic Spanish and noble indigenous descent went on a quest of knowledge. He wanted to compile a history of New Spain, which is now modern Mexico. He gathered elders and codices from all over New Spain. Thus, he created the history of the Chichimeca nations, a history from the supposed creation of the world up to the siege of Tenochtitlan. History of Aslan presents an animated history of the Chichimeca nations. Most noble and illustrious lord, since youth I have always greatly desired to know about the historical events in this new world, which is no less important than that of the Greeks, Romans, and Medes, and the other great pagan republics of old. However, with the passage of time and the fall of the kingdoms and states of my ancestors, their histories were buried. For this reason, with much effort, searching, I have achieved my desire to bring together the painted and sung histories with which they preserved them. For this I have gathered many elders who can understand them from all over New Spain. With their help I was able to understand easily their paintings and histories and translate their true meanings. With all this I was able to satisfy my quest for knowledge and adhere to the truth. I have written and dedicated this brief account of the history of New Spain as it is rightfully yours, your illustrious lordship. Don Fernando de Alva eats Luis Sochito. They called the first stage of the world Atonatio. This means son of water, an allusion to a devastating flood that destroyed everything and ended this age. The second age was called Plachito Natio, which means son of earth, because this age ended in earthquakes that destroyed the world and killed off most of its original inhabitants, giants. The third age was called Ecato Natio. This means son of wind, because the fierce winds destroyed everything and killed most of mankind. Some of mankind had survived. They had arrived from the east in boats to Potochan, divided into two groups, the Olmecas and Chicolancos. They sailed on the riverbanks nearby. They also came into contact with giants that had survived the end of the second age. They subjugated and enslaved the new settlers. Thus, the leaders of the tribe gathered and conspired against the giants. They gathered their oppressors and invited them to sit and eat and drink. The giants got drunk and fell asleep. The people then killed the giants with their own large weapons they left lying around. This event caused the Olmecas and Chicolancos to expand their power across the new land. Then a man arrived at the height of these people's prosperity. He was called Quetzalcoatl or Huemac by some. He was renowned for how just, wise, and good and holy he was. He taught them many things such as law, virtue, and to avoid sin, and also how to fast. Quetzalcoatl established himself in the city of Cholula, but over time he saw that people had now reverted to their old ways, and that they now cared little for his teachings. Thus he went east to Coatzacoalco. Before he said farewell, he told the people that he would return in the year Sa'agato. His descendants would return and rule the land and enforce what he taught, and that the descendants of the people he left behind would suffer many casualties and persecutions and many other prophecies that have been clearly fulfilled. A few days after Quetzalcoatl had left, the destruction of the Third Age had begun. Strong winds destroyed everything, including the large tower of Cholula. The descendants of those who survived built a temple on top dedicated to Quetzalcoatl, the god of wind. Supposedly, all this took place sometime before the Incarnation of Christ. Thus began the Fourth Age, our age, which is known as Teleto Matil, the Son of Fire, because supposedly our age will end in a fiery cataclysm. This is where the story of the Chichimeca Nation starts. It begins with the Tolteca Nation. They were exiled from their original homeland in the north. They sailed down California until they reached Huitlapan, the Red Sea known to us as the Sea of Cortez, in the year Set Tecmatl, 1 Flint, 387 AD. They continued down the coast until they reached the coast of Jalisco, at a place called Huatalco. They made their way to Tochtepec on the Atlantic coast. Then, after surveying the land, they decided to settle in an area that was known as Tolantzinco, where they reckoned they had wandered 104 years. Their system of government had also stayed the same during this time, a council of seven leaders, 
The Zolteca also built their capital, which was called Dolan. Seven years after they founded it, they elected a king. He was called Chonshi Wimatsin, near Shikome Akato. Seven read 51080. He governed for 52 years during that time, establishing relations with neighboring areas, making alliances, and bringing them under Tolteca rule. He was succeeded by Tlilich Awak, Tlachino Sin, also in Shikome Akato. Seven read 56280, also ruling 52 years. Huetsin inherited the empire. In Shikwasin, Tochli, 6 Rabbit, 61380. He ruled for 52 years because it became custom for Tolteca rulers to rule for that amount of years, and he would also die in the year of the same name, 664, where Totepeu succeeded him. He died in the year Makwili Kali, 5 House, 716 AD. He was succeeded by Naka Sosh, who died in 768 AD. The year of the same name, Tlakumiwa inherited the empire. He expanded the Toltec Empire. Contrary to the other Tolteca rulers, he ruled for 59 years, dying in the year 826 AD. Matlacito owns Akatl, 11 read. Queen Gio Getsin succeeded him, but she only ruled for 4 years and died in the year Ome Akatl, 2 read. 830 AD, he was succeeded by Itzakaltin, who ruled for another 52 years. It would be his son who would cause the Tolteca Empire to fall. As aforementioned, Istakaltsin ruled the Tulteca Empire for 52 years. He was succeeded by his son, who was illegitimate, named Tupilsin, in the year 882 AD. Also, Ome Akatu, to read, Tupilsin ascended the throne. The elders spoke of predictions and prophecies that foretold the omens that would come true throughout his rule. One of these was that the last ruler would have hair that stood up from the front of his head to his neck, which was a physical feature of Tupilsin. Another would be that rabbits would grow antlers like deer. Lastly, hummingbirds would grow spurs like turkeys. With these prophecies coming true, everyone in the empire worried and was in fear. To add to this, the crops failed, and insects got into the granaries and ate all the food in them. There also began a drought that lasted for 26 years. Seeing Topilzin's incompetence at dealing with these disasters that befell his empire, a confederation of nobles and looters from other provinces under the Toltec of Horn went against them. They captured many cities in a short time, ultimately taking the capital of Dolan. Topilzin was able to flee with a group of his people, but his enemies quickly caught up to him and killed them. Although Topilzin disappeared and was never heard from again, this destruction occurred in 959 AD, Setek when Flint. The Tolteca who survived fled into the mountains or hid in the reeds of Lake Gulwakan. Five years after the fall of the Tolteca Empire, in the year 963 AD, known as Makwili Tekpatl, five slain Shulot, a Chichimeca leader who was from the legendary Chigamostok, the Seven Caves, arrived in the area of Tolan. His scouts had previously reported of the destruction of the Tolteca nation. Seeing Dolan in ruins and uninhabited, he decided to not resettle it. Instead, he made his way into the Valley of Mexico on the eastern shores of Lake Texcoco. He decided to settle in a place called Tenayucan Ostopulco, which had many caves. He settled it with his army, which, excluding the women and children, numbered to one million men. Jalot also had a child, Nopoltzin, who was a young man at the time and would succeed him. Shalut went on to establish settlements for 20 years, all while six of his captains arrived one by one to help him settle. Meanwhile, the Tolteca survivors in Kulwakan had chosen Nawiotzin. Shalut decided to demand a tribute from them and to declare him as supreme and universal lord in all of Anahuac. Nawiotzin, on behalf of his nation, refused, saying that these lands were rightfully his as they belonged to his ancestors and they would not submit to anyone, only their gods and the sun. Thus, Shalot told his son, Nopaltzin, that he would command a small force as the Tolteca were not as good fighters as the Chichimeco, and put down the Tolteca. The battle took place on the lake. In the marshes of Lake Kulwakan, the Kulwas had the strategic advantage of canoes. Nopaltzin defeated them quickly, and put a Chitomet as a ruler for the Toltecas of Kulwakan, and they had to pay tribute to Shalot. All this occurred in the year 984 AD, which they call 13th House.
Charlotte had still been establishing settlement in Anawak for 47 years, in which the Akulwa peoples arrived in the year 1011 AD. They came from the province of Michoacan. Then the Tepanecas arrived, and finally the Otomis, who were the most foreign due to their language. According to their histories, they came from the Vermilion Sea, or Sea of Cortez. They presented themselves for Charlotte, who was pleased as they came from very ancient lineages. He gave these tribes the land to settle. And around this time, Prince Nobaltin married the granddaughter of Toplitzin. And thus, Shlot and Prince Nobaltin would continue to partition the land between the arriving Chichimeca tribes, which would give rise to how central Mexico would look divided amongst the many altipetals, or city-states, in the early 14th century. As Shlot was on his deathbed in the mid-1200s, a people who referred to themselves as the Aztecas began to make their descent towards the Valley of Mexico.